Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And if you remember in video M100, the celebratory uh, video, the 100th video in my channel, I announced a quiz uh, to win an IBM S370, just like we saw right now on the screen, uh, like this one. And I said whoever could answer uh, the two questions I had, um, one was an, uh, related to uh, which version of an operating system was running, um, on a print that was produced and the other one was related to uh, seeing uh, me write a program in assembler and finding out what the output of the program would be. Here you see the output in question. I asked which operating system made that output. It was MVT 21.8 and I explained why in a, in a in video M101 I think. And uh, the other thing is that I, sh I also asked how to, I explained about the translate instruction, how it uses a table. And then I started to write a, uh, a program that was implementing this translate instruction. And, in the, uh, and so when I uh, wrote the program and uh, put up the whole video online within, I think about an hour, uh, somebody found out what the, uh, what the output was going to be and what the operating system version it was. And that person was Grigory Tranin in Moscow. And well, a promise is a promise. And so I packed up my bags, bought a ticket and boarded a plane to go to Russia to deliver my mainframe. So we decided to meet just after the Russian Christmas. I think it was January 9 or 10 or 8 maybe. And here is the S370 mainframe in a Repsbury housing, uh, 10,000 miles to the east on a table in a Russian restaurant in central Moscow and waiting for Grigory Trenin to walk in and claim his prize. As you can see here, this is a bona fide Russian menu <laughs> and uh, I'm just waiting for Grigory to walk in. And here's the winner of the IBM S370 mainframe, Grigory, hello. Hello. Hello from Russia. <laughs> and as I promised, I delivered the S370 mainframe to the doorstep. I kept my promise and uh, I'll give you the cable <laughs> separately. Um, but uh, here's the winner. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And that's Grigori and me after we finished our dinner together. Here is the mainframe. <laughs> yeah, it's upside down. <laughs> that's it. Grigori, the proud winner. He learned the unpack instruction on the fly to answer the question, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's it. The winner of the S370 in Moscow and delivered by Moshe's. Thank you. So this is the new owner of the mainframe that you see walking away there with uh, the S370, Grigori. Very nice chap. Always very nice to meet people from the channel. Uh, by Grigori, you can't hear us, but that's him walking in the cold streets, in the freezing streets of Moscow. And so with this item done, uh, the mainframe delivered, I then uh, flew from Russia to Germany to go to have an amazing experience. I was invited by a mainframe organization in Europe and Germany to uh, go give a speech about uh, virtualization, about ZVM and uh, Zen and KVM hypervisors that uh, professionally, uh, I know very well, and some people know why. That doesn't really matter, but I gave a speech. And then, the, for me, really, the height of the whole experience was coming to this data center. I'm, I'm not at liberty to say where this was exactly, but uh, so this amazing data center where we had a, 
an IBM 1401, a, this is an S370 model 125 that you see here. Uh, and that's the one, that's a central processing unit. Uh, there was also an IBM S360. This is an, uh, an IBM 9370, which I actually worked on back in the 80s. We were able to run uh, VM, MVS and uh, DOS VS. And this is the console of the IBM S360 model 20, if I'm correct. You see here the red button is the emergency stop button. And here you see this is the tape drives of the IBM 1401 working. Yeah, the oldest machines are working. And in a while, I'll just show you uh, an initial machine loading, an IML, one of those machines. This is this drive here. This is the, the most beautiful mainframe in my eyes, the IBM 1401. Look how beautiful it is. This machine is running right now. So you can see here, only two registers, register A and register B. This is a decimal arithmetic machine. Uh, very, uh, a very interesting machine. And there, by, the, by the way, there's emulators for the 1401 able to run the uh, Fortran compilers and the uh, AutoCode um, assembler compiler from back then. Uh, AutoCoder, I think it was called. And uh, this machine has German writing on it, of course. And you can see on the lower lower, lower left um, corner, you had the emergency uh, stop as well. And uh, this machine ran and produced output. Here is the uh, typical rack that you always had next to mainframes with the uh, well, all the manuals for the IBM customer engineer, the CE, uh, who, were, who was the one who would um, provide, maintain the machine, make sure that all the hardware related and, and micro code related parts of the machine were working fine. You can see here all these drives are working. Uh, beautiful machine. And in many ways for me, this was the real, uh, the real height of, the, uh, of that particular visit in Germany was seeing an IBM S370 this is the console that you see here. Here on the right side, you see the eight inch floppy drive that loads the microcode. Seeing this machine uh, start up and do the what's called the initial machine loading. In mainframe, you have the IPL, which loads the operating system. But before the IPL, what you see here on the screen is the IML, the initial machine loading, which just starts the machine and brings the power levels up to the correct power levels and loads, very importantly, the microcode. As you know, mainframes by IBM were heavily microcode programmed. Microcode is kind of a code that's between the CPU and and the instruction set. Uh, it, it does all kind of things. It, it's and it's not really accessible to the users on the mainframe. But as you can see here, IMPL in progress. This machine is, still works fine. 512 kilobytes of memory. Uh, I, I saw that it was previously running at a bank somewhere. And uh, this is this is the very first 3270 console for a mainframe as you can see here there's no more there's no more uh, store uh, register indicators and all the switches on the front panel it wasn't required anymore because now you had the 3270 screen where you could do all this work interact with the with the with the computer and this was the very first machine that did away with those uh, switches and the and the front panel console of the previous mainframes that we just saw in, in previous videos uh, uh, on this in a, just a couple of minutes ago. So you can see here, what's happening is it's, uh, this machine had controllers for telecommunications, for disk, for tapes, and for printers already installed inside the machine. So you didn't need controllers. You could attach those directly to the computer. And what it's doing right now is it's starting up those units. And so that's why it's telling us on the screen that a uh, printer uh, card is working and telecommunication processor is working. So you could attach 32 screens, 70 uh, consoles and monitors to it. And now you would have kind of the the monitor of the machine. As you, you, we know also from VAX machines when you start up and you already have something you can interact with, but the operating system is not running yet. And this is exactly where we are. The operating system, it's not running. This is where you would tell it now where you to go and load the operating system. Or you could do things which is to visualize uh, the state of the processor. So you could look into registers, you could print out memory, uh, you can print out the control, the, the state of the registers. You can put in value into the registers. And if you look at that, that is very much similar to the Hercules console we have when we start the Hercules. We can do the exact same things we're doing right now we can do in Hercules. And I guess some of that was inspired from this. Um, so this was amazing for me that we were able. So what he's doing here right now is pressing pre uh, enter to print out certain regions, regions of the memory. And it's printing it out on this printer. I don't think it's a 1403, I think this is a 3211, 
if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. And I have to, I was given the printout from this machine, as you can see here. Uh, it's printing out memory contents, and so I, I was uh, I was given the printout to keep, as well as another very nice printout from this very machine from a DOS VS dump. Uh, this machine has DOS VS installed, but we were not able within the short time frame to IPL DOS VS because I had to go rush and give my speech right after uh, we IPL this machine. But this is how it used to be. Um, after so many videos we've made in this channel talking about mainframes, uh, here is one that actually runs. And it was a real joy for me to do it. And thank you very much to the organizers and to everybody who made this possible. Here again, the rack with all the manuals for the IBM CE. Anyway, this just gives you a taste of what I saw and experienced both in Russia with one of our wonderful channel um, community members, as well as uh, afterwards in the data center tour and trying out stuff on uh, old mainframes. So it was a wonderful experience. And I want to thank, thank everybody. I can't put too much in here because that makes the whole video way too long. I just wanted to make a very short travel report and, uh, and show you some of the wonderful things I saw and some of the uh, great new friends I made. Uh, during this trip uh, because of this very Moshik's mainframe channel. So thank you all for making this possible. Thank you for everybody hosting me in Europe and in Russia and uh, hope to see many of you more during forthcoming trips in this year and in, in other years. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed to this uh, channel yet, I would urge you to do so now. If you like this particular video, please do press on the thumbs up button. And if you have comments, please post the comments. It makes the search engines find this video much easier and, uh, and we can have an interaction within the community. Thank you and goodbye.